Azabani for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. I'm delighted to have with me on Zoom today, MTK and ESPN's very own pundit and the knowledge himself, Mr. Spencer Ferron. Spence, um, never seen you with a with a with a with a snapback hat like that. Joggers on today, bit of a casual Monday. Oh, it was hot out there today, man. So, yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, it was hot out there. And I've been, I was doing my stretches and then you hollered and said, like, don't want to jump on. So no doubt I'm going to jump on. So it's all good. Appreciate it. How are things? How's the family? Everybody's good, you know. You know what I mean? So I'm just grateful, you know. Good, good, good. Um, Spence, firstly, I want to go back to uh, the weekend, Saturday night, Devin Haney and Lenares in a, in a great little 12 round fight. Um, I want to just touch on Devin's tweet. I don't know if you saw his tweet tonight where he said, I boxed for 12 rounds. They say I'm boring and I take no chances. I get knocked out of the year. They say it was against a nobody. I fight one of the hardest punches in the lightweight division and win the first nine rounds and decided I want to try and go for the stoppage. And still it's something. He's getting a lot of hate. Yeah, of course he's going to get a lot of hate. He's going to get a lot of hate because that's just the nature of the game. Big up Devin Haney, big up Bill Haney. They're my guys. You know what I mean? Um, I, I don't know what you're I don't know what you're meant to do because check this one out. He boxed superb. Cut out the round where he got wobbled. Well, not wobbled, he got stung with a shot. This is boxing. You know what I mean? It's like you're walking in rain, even with a brolly, you're gonna get a bit of wet. He got a little bit wet, no big thing. And it's all learning. What is he? He's 22 years old now, right? He's a baby. Right, he's a baby, he's just got to keep on doing what he's doing and he's going to keep on growing. And he demonstrated some really, really good skills because he he outboxed a superb free weight world champion. So let's give the kids some credit, man. They're, they're fighting on this guy like, it's, just, it's, a, it's, it's, it's crazy, but it's a good thing. You know what I mean? Because it's still, whether it's negative or po positive, if they're focusing on you, they're giving you energy. And the real energy is like, you know, how it goes. The kid's only going to count numbers when he's going to the bank. He's getting financially rewarded. He's a world champion and an official world champion, not no made up franchise world champion. So he's an official world champion. Give the kid his credit uh, uh, as that. You know what I mean? Very polite kid. Uh, we, we did a watch along and we spoke to him in his change room, me and Tundi. And because uh, Tundi's got a close relationship with, with Bill and Devon. And yeah, and it's all good. So I think the more they hate, yeah, you use that fuel to rise your balloon and you use it as helium and you just kill it with success. That's what um, Frank Sinatra said, that the best form of revenge is massive success. He's an unbeaten kid as a world champion. I mean, and he just got to keep on going. He, he had obviously Ben Davison in the corner for the first time. Um... We're not sure if that's going to be a long-term strategy and a long-term uh, kind of position for Ben. Uh, but um, what did you make of them bringing Ben in and, and did you see anything different in Devin? I didn't see nothing different. No, there's no disrespect to Ben, right? For, oh, you're hating on Ben. No, no, no. No, I didn't see anything different. I didn't see anything different. I didn't see anything different. Ben was there as an assistant. Bill Haney was the trainer, right? He's Devin's father. Um, and we know that I speak regularly to Mickey Bay, and I think Mickey Bay, if he doesn't mind me speaking about it, like he's had some uh, um, family issues um, that he had to go take care of. So he wasn't in the camp, but he's there for Devon. So, you know, I mean, that's all cool. But Devon's had a plethora of experience. We're around experienced people. And so, you know what I mean, he grew up training with Floyd Senior. He's grew up training with Mike McCullum. You get what I'm trying to say? He's grew up training with, 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 um, um, what did I say? Uh, well, Mickey Bay, former IBF lightweight world champion. So he's been around a plethora of experience, sparred with a plethora of different talent. So, um, no disrespect, <laughs> Ben Davidson coming in for five weeks, they're gonna do nothing. You know what I mean? Maybe it'll give a little bit a different perspective, right? Having someone from from England, but no, it's not gonna improve his game off of the bat. So no, 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 no. What would you like to see Devon do next? He's like I said, Spence. He's like you just said. He's twenty-two years of age. He has 
so much time left to um, increase his skill set, get more experience and better himself as a fighter. We know his promoter, his father, even Devin saying, I want the Teofimo Lopez fight. Does that fight now need to, does that fight need to happen now? Or as tradition, as people like to say nowadays, let the fight marinate. Well, we keep on saying about let the fight marinate. Um, what was it? In 1979, Sugar Ray Leonard should have, but I'm talking before Sugar Ray Leonard won the world title in November of 99, 1979, sorry. He was offered to fight Tommy Hunt, right? If they were a fool at that time in 1979, Ray Leonard and Tommy Hunt would have made about 100 grand each, right? The great man, Angelo Dundee, and Angelo Dundee was a great man because he's also Leonard's manager. Um, he had a man called Mike Trainer, who was his, who was Leonard's lawyer, right? But he didn't know the boxing business. They got somebody who knew the boxing business, and Ali famously, the uh, Ali, <laughs> sorry, Angelo Dundee famously worked with Ali, and he knew the business because, quote unquote, officially in the beginning when Ali turned professional, he was Ali's manager as well. So they needed someone, as Ali said, we needed somebody with the complexions and the connections, right? So he said, no, let it wait. Let that fight wait, let it build. Then what happens, um, what happens is in 79, he becomes world champion and Ray Leonard beats Wilfred Benitez in November. And then of 1980, late 1980, Tommy Hearns becomes the Kronk Gym's second world champion. The first world champion was the lightweight champion called Hill McKinty. Right, then the second world champion was Tommy Hearns when he knocks out the PNL Quavers to um, win the WBA um, welterweight championship of the world. And then when they both, when they eventually did meet to fight in September of 81, it was, what was it? I think Leonard, Leonard got something like $10 million. Tommy Hearns got $8 million. Ridiculous. Back then, ridiculous money. So you have to look at it and say, when we say, I'll let him marinate, let him, let those big fights, let them marinate. But right now, I think there is demand on for certain fights. Do I think that Devin Haney just needs to wait and get experience. This is the thing that I don't understand. Ryan Garcia gets knocked down against Luke Campbell, but nobody, nobody, nobody talks about that. Like, Rob, oh, Rob, you got knocked down and he got knocked down. It was a bad knockdown, right? So why is it that everyone's picking flaws on Devin? Do you get what I'm trying to say? This same guy, Lenora, is knocked, knocked down as the only man as a professional to knock down Lomachenko. So why are we not picking up that? Like, this guy can fight. What, what we, we, we were really totally just brushing my guy but to one side like he can't fight. Of course he can fight. Are you giving something where he's hungry for it? Not in these also round fights with, against guys that he's already beaten, right? Lenora's can come to fight because I was saying potentially, I was looking at that as a potential banana skill. I'm going to be wrong. So for Devin to box the way that he's done, I totally commend him, but unfortunately, we have fans in the sport, but we don't have boxing people who give their opinions on the sport, right? I know boxing, my friend, and Devin Haney. That display was absolutely excellent, and he did. And so you got you got caught. Has not Floyd Mayweather been caught before? Okay, then Floyd Mayweather being caught, Sugar Leonard being caught, Marvin Hagler being caught. We go for the whole list. So you get caught, you can get hurt. This is boxing. But what do you do after that? So he did what he had to do. He had his wits about him to say, you know what? I don't need to stand the fight. All I've got to do is just last out these next two rounds because I've, I've won potentially every single round prior. So let me just do that, get the win, and let's move on to the next thing. Okay. Um, Spence, when I think it, was, yeah, it is Monday today. Monday, fight week. Yeah, yeah. When Mayweather, Logan Paul <laughs> on Sunday. No, no, no disrespect, no disrespect, no disrespect. I ain't talking about that. On the rules, well, friend, let, me ask, just, let me ask you one thing on this. A lot of people if, are if it's a question. A lot of people are hating on Floyd Mayweather for taking this fight. We know Sky no. have picked this up pay per view. No, is he in his right to do what he wants to make the millions? No. He fought everyone he had to fight. Pardon me. He fought in his day everyone that he had to fight. Fifty exactly. and out fired. Right. He is Floyd Mayweather isn't now. He's not in, he's in the entertainment business of saying, listen, let me just do and pick up whatever. He's going to get 100 mil for this or whatever. I don't know. Let, he's entitled to do that, right? He's entitled to do that because he fought everybody. 
And the haters are going to say, well, he cherry-picked. No, he never. You know what I mean? No, he never. Right? What was Ricky Hatton cherry-picking, was it? You know what I mean? When, and at the time there, you could have found nobody in Great Britain that would have thought that, that, that uh, Ricky Hatton was going to lose. Nobody. Go back, look at the newspaper clips. Go back, go look at the panels when they're talking about it. Everybody was behind Ricky Hatton there. What? So was he cherry-picking when he fought Shane Mosley and got badly hurt? Where was he cherry picking? Was he cherry picking when he was he cherry picking when he moves up? When he moves up in weights, not weight in weights, when he moves up in weights to fight um, Oscar De La Hoya, who was a physically bigger man. Was he cherry picking then? Come on, make up your mind, man. When we say, oh, well, he cherry picked. No, he never. Look, look at the things that he done when he's a super featherweight. Look at the things he done when he's a lightweight. Look at the things he done when he's a lightweight weight. Troy Mayweather is entitled to pick who he wants to go and, and fight right now. He's paid his dues in the sport. Right, it's not Floyd Mayweather's fault that 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 fans want to see this because somebody's paying for it. So that's what I'm saying. I didn't really want to get into it too much because I'm not running. I'm not running. Floyd is beaten and he's an all-time great and potentially could be seen as one of the greatest fighters ever to do. He likes to say that he is. You know I mean, I can argue with that, but it doesn't matter. He's part of the greatness. He's part of that synergy, that energy. He's part of it. Leave the man alone. Let him do what he wants to go do. What would you rather him jump out of retirement now and say, I, I want to fight one of these young cats right now, but we know that his time is a little bit out. We know why. Why should he do that? Spence, I'm sure you might have uh, seen or, or seen some seen the interview or saw some quotes from uh, Dion Terroir. They did an interview, I think, on um, 7, 8 Sports TV with uh, his new trainer, Malik Scott. I just want to touch on a couple of things that he mentioned. Uh, one of the first things when asked about potentially Tyson Fury fighting anti Joshua, he said, of course, he looks at it as a coward way of trying to move, trying to avoid me. For what reason? We know the reason, and he knows the reason. What do you think he meant by that? I don't know. I mean, I don't know. He's saying, like, he knows he knows the reason. That's between him and Tyson Fury. I don't, I'm being wrong. I don't know. Right? But what I am saying is, Honor your contract. As much as I don't really want to see the fight, I want to see it for the fact of morality. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? And morally, it's the correct thing to do to, 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 to fight him. It's not that I want to see it because I don't want to see it. But I'll watch it. Right? And that's it, basically. I wish Deontay Wilder all the best. Um, I do. I wish him all the best. And we could be looking at a potential banana skin here. Because this is heavyweight boxing. And Deontay Wilder can bang. And now he's working with Malik Scott. He's trying to learn or he's being taught certain technicalities. Whether that's going to be enough to go in there with the ring with Tyson Fury after the time, by the time you fight, what's it going to be like? Nearly two years? It's a, it's a long time, right? So, yeah, we. it is what it is, man. You mentioned that Malik Scott, obviously there's a lot of clips online on the Instagram and Twitter where Malik's showing him, as you said, different techniques and, and styles, etc. One of the comments that Malik mentioned, uh, Spence, I'm sure you've read it, uh, or if not, I'll read it to you. He said, Muhammad Ali is one of the greatest fighters of all time. He, he was very magical in the ring, but it was the things he beat outside the ring that truly got my attention. Deontay Wilder is the closest thing to that in this time. Say what? <laughs> you know what? <laughs> oh, oh my goodness gracious. <laughs> I'm going to answer that. You know what? I like Malik Scott. I, I mean, he's a he is a very very nice man. Very, I mean, he's a cool guy. You know what I mean? I wish he didn't say that. You know what I mean? Because you've opened up, you've opened yourself up to get shots at, so that people are going to be questioning your your sanity as a as a trainer. You know what I mean? Ali's Ali's last fight before being stripped to the title. Um, what was it? March 22nd. Was it March 22nd? Yeah, March 22nd, 1970, 1967, when he knocks out Zora Foley. Zora Foley was a decent fighter. 
a little bit past peak on the slide, but Ali knocks him out. Ali knocks him out. I think it's like seven or eight rounds, right? I'm head topping there. Ali refused the draft to the Vietnam War, where Ali famously said that no Viet Cong, the people of Vietnam, nobody out there didn't call me the N-word, right? This is what Ali said. At a time when blacks in America were still being lynched in the Deep South, where Deontay Wilder's from, they were still being lynched. Now, for the young kids who don't know what lynching was, it's when a group of white people used to go out, you know what I mean? In their, in their pickup trucks and, and grab a black person, hold him up and lynch the man and burn him on fire. But before they'll do that, they'll castrate him. It's a different, horrible time of American history, which was nasty. Now, to all the black Americans out there who think that atrocity is atrocity, but when atrocity is done to someone's skin tone, what looks like myself, then I can't escape that, can I? because I have an affinity with it. You know what I mean? I have a synergy with it and I have a deep empathy with it. So when I'm hearing um, saying like, he's the closest thing, maybe it's because in America, or we have sports people who don't rightly come out and speak out of the atrocities that are happening to, to um, people who are black Americans. But are you trying to say that Deontay Wilder is a closer comparison to Muhammad Ali, right? Than Colin Kaepernick. Is that what you're trying to say? I rest my case on that. I just wish that he didn't say that, but I understand what Deontay Wilder is trying to do. I get it. I get what you're trying to do. But here is the difference. I'm just going to educate and hope, because I know anytime you mention Deontay Wilder's name, all of these guys like in America pick it up and they want to throw it out to him. Ah, oh, this guy in England saying this again again, you and he don't do, oh, you don't know no about boxing. All right, cool, right, whatever. Really, I, I know a lot. What I'm trying to say, especially historically, I could eat everywhere. I don't need to run to a computer screen, leave us all up here. Listen to what I'm saying to you, Deontay, um, to Malik Scott. At the time when Ali was stripped to the title in 70, um, in 67 his last defense, then he gets stripped of his world title. He gets stripped of his world title and he's threatened to go to jail. They said that you could go to jail and it was a $10,000 fine. Right, he had to pay the fine, he didn't go to jail. He couldn't fight for those times, for the time. So three and a half years, he was out of the ring. He couldn't fight. Ali was famously being taught by a social reformer called Elijah Muhammad. Muhammad Ali was around Malcolm X, the great Malcolm X, who's one of the one of the greatest Americas, Black Americas of all time, period, right? When I'm turning around saying like, Ali was in the Nation of Islam, I don't agree with certain of their beliefs because it means uh, Orthodox Muslim would say that's shirk or innovation for people who don't know of their beliefs. But what I am going to say is props to them for being social reformers, for taking people out of the prison systems, giving them jobs, getting them educated about self, the knowledge of the polarities of the universe, that was what was taught in the nation of Islam. So we can't make a comparison because we haven't got the nation of Islam in its strong force now, today, right? We do have social reformers who are dealing with or attacking certain things or injustices in black America. So if Deontay Wilder is being taught by those people, then maybe I could just say, yeah, I could see the similarities here. There is no similarities. I understand that Deontay Wilder will speak out on racial injustices and certain things like that. But sometimes you can't just think like an injustice is an injustice. Doesn't have to be just racial, political, economical, financial, spiritual. There are loads of different injustices that we could go and take on, take on board, right? So when we're saying like, over, you have to stand up for, for injustice. You can't just be uh, injustice against what's happening to black people. You've got to be injustice for everyone. And this is the truth. We've got to say, well, that's not really our argument. It is our argument. You know what I mean? Because that's why you have certain movements that I'm against, but I'm with the narrative like Black Lives Matter. I'm against the political stance that he has, but the narrative, I'm all for it because we actually do matter, right? But we matter as well as someone else's life matters, right? So, but you have to think about it. In the 60s and 70s, 
black people were marching for civil rights. Do you understand what that means? They were, they were, they were marching just to be treated in a civil manner. That's crazy, man. So when we're saying that Deontay Wilder, he's saying that the, he's the closest thing to you is the closest thing, right? But let's be real, he's not the closest thing. Ali stood for something and was willing to give up something that he did. He gave up his world heavyweight title for people that look like me. I rest my case. So, and I speak passionately about that because that's the regard that I hold Ali in, right? And people of my age group, we can all that like, we hold Ali in that kind of sincerity. Deontay Wilder, well, you're not held in that sincerity, my friend. You're not. I understand what you're trying to do. And I think you should keep on pushing forward on the things that you're trying to do. But what I would say to you is start reading books from John Henry Clark. If you haven't already, Deontay Wilder, start, start studying. There's, there, there are social reformers down in America, guy like Brother Polite, the next guy, uh, Brother Ben X, you know I mean, um, ooh, 19 Keys, Keys 19, him as well. Start tuning in with these guys, start being associated and affiliated with these guys. Start being around Brother Nuri Muhammad, and then maybe, just maybe, even Umar Johnson, maybe, just maybe, if Deontay Wilder was affiliated to those guys, you know what I mean? Then I could see by your rhetoric or how you, you deal with things, I'll say, right, you're you're around some 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 knowledgeable, knowledgeable guys or some guys who've got who are great orators. Then I could say, yeah. But no, man. Sorry, Malik Scott. You, there is no comparison, my friend. But I do rate you as a boxing person. I can see the things that you're doing with Deontay Wilder and what you're working on, but there is there is no comparison to Ali. Ali's one of the greatest living human beings of the, the 20th century period stood for something was willing to die for something you heard what mike tyson said that like, lots of people got a ring and say yeah yeah, I, yeah we want to die for this no ali meant that he meant that man and that's the difference and that's the difference and i'm telling you now the love that i have for ali unprecedented but i grew up in a time where i got taylor and ali but what he just meant for 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 for, for black people and the world, because the world claimed him after we didn't want nothing to do with him. So let's just keep it real. Let's keep it real. Let's keep it real now. Sorry. Sorry, sorry. I'm getting emotional on this one there, man. Right? I'm just getting emotional on it. Ali, Ali at the time, Ali at the time when he became world heavyweight champion, in February 25th, 1964, when he beat Sonny Liston, the black man in America at that time, yeah? Quote, unquote, officially, the, they're trying to say the first real slave ships in mass quantity landed in America in 1619. That means for 149 years, black people were in America, right? Constitution stated that they were, what was it? Um, one fifth a human being? That's mad, right? And when you talk about these things, see, you're starting me now, you know, when you talk about these things, people look, oh, but you've got a chip on your shoulder. You got to think how many years ago that was. We're not even going back 70 years, you know? 70 years. No, brother. No, 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 no. Right? Uh, Malik Scott saying how much he loved Ali, then you know, you should know better than that. There's no comparison at all. Furthermore, that's a disrespect. I'm saying it now. That's a disrespect. Or maybe it is because we have no, no uh, uh, black people now who want to stand up because they're chasing the buck. No, Ali, Ali said to hell with this. Do you know I mean? To hell with the money, to hell with the fame or your adulation, to hell with your system, to hell with me running around um, 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 kissing the authorities' ass. I ain't doing none of that shit. Right. And that's who you want to compare him to? You want to say that he's this generation's Ali? We ain't got no this generation's Ali. We got a bunch of cowards. That's what we got. Don't wind me up, man. Word of advice to Deontay Wilder. Deontay Wilder, contact Nuru Muhammad. Learn something. You don't need to join No Nation of Islam. Or contact Nuru Muhammad. Contact Brother Polite. Brother Polite. Contact Brother Ben X. 
let these guys educate you on these kind of things on the systems. So therefore, you can use your platform that you got to bust the knowledge that these these brothers have got. Then, just then, maybe just then, I may kind of say, "Well, yeah, he could be this new age Ali," but if you're not. And that's it, man. Forget about that one. Spencer Ferron, IFL TV. Thank you very much.